What about now? I tried to refresh it. Yes, now it's fine. Awesome. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm okay. Yeah, it's quite late for me, but she'll be good. All right, so I'll just uh, get straight to it. So here's the problem I would like you to solve today. And uh, just so you know, this is a problem I was recently asked by TikTok. And uh, obviously, as engineers, we always want to share all of this. So it's a, it's a pretty nice problem. Uh, at least that's what I thought about it. And the whole idea is um, you're given a grid. And this grid contains a list, uh, you know, it's a list of letters. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to move, and you're allowed to move in all the von Neumann directions. So from A, you can go to another A, you can go to D. But here's the catch. If you start moving in a particular direction, you have to stick mm -hmm. to it. So if you're going down, stick to going down. If you're going left, stick to going left. If you're going right, stick to going right. And you're also given a list of words, a dictionary set essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, your job essentially is to return all list of words that can be formed from um, from the given grid. And the output format should be as follows. So it should be starting endpoint. So you can you can return it in you know a tuple or a list. And so it should be P1, P2 to identify the cell point or the cell that you're starting with, uh, the word, as well as the direction. As for the direction, so this is what I'll uh, I'll prefer you do. So for the direction, you can prefer, you know, assume you are assume you're on the zero zero cell. So if mm -hmm. you're on the zero zero cell, if you're to move right, then you'll obviously be going zero to one, right? You are uh, not one, zero to one, one to zero. Like you'll be holding the y constant and move to the right. If you're to move left, it's the opposite, right? Negative one to zero. Make sense? Okay. okay. Yeah, so you know, if you're diagonal, obviously, if you're going up diagonal, it's negative one, negative one, and if you're moving down diagonal, then it's one, one. If you're moving, uh, you know, from current cell to left, so you, you, I think you get the gist of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll need a set of three, imp uh, three outputs uh, for all words. So for each of the words, you'll give me a cell, the word that's. Uh, the word that corresponds to the output as well as the direction. And you can make the output a list of lists containing all the words as well as the starting points as well as the direction that you want to go. And the direction should be in this format. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. So you all said right. what, uh, so a few clarification that so the so when you say so if this is BACK, so the first line say back. So that's mm -hmm. like one direction, right? So it is going to right. Exactly. And then so the out mm -hmm. we can change that direction after that. And then so uh, the uh, output. If you if we say we had another uh, word, let's say Bucky here, uh, like that, and we had another word. Uh, uh, let's you know just let's uh, randomize this. So if we had uh, the word Bucky in this. Then I will still expect both the word Bucky to be input. In fact, if we had, if we had Yob here, so we would, I would expect both Buck, Bucky, and Yob as part of the output. Um, Does that make sense? Uh, so why would we go Yob? Because but we change the direction now, right? So we can say after we find the word, then we can change direction. You. Yeah, so after we change there after we find the word we can change direction. That's not an issue. So, you know, for Yob we obviously have a different starting point in light of the word. Like uh considering the word Yob as an entity, it has a different starting point as well as a different direction. So it's totally okay to change direction once you've found the word. Okay. And um, so how will the output be? So if I start so the P one is the start of the word and P two is the end of the word? No, P1 is the starting coordinate. So if for Bucky, for instance, I'll give you an output format for Bucky. So for Bucky, so it will be P101. The word is Bucky, right? And the direction is, let's see. Oh, okay. And P the direction here will be? What's the direction for that? So the direction would be we're going to us our right. So it will be mm -hmm. 0, 
yeah, so we're only changing the y coordinate and not the x coordinate. Is that right or? Uh huh. Actually, I think it will be one zero because we each. Uh, That's zero, right. We, which... we we are changing. Uh, no, we are x is constant. Right? We're changing our y's. Is that the case? Because we're coming from B to A. Oh, because it's a direction C. of graph. Yeah, so x keeps changing. It's a one. But why one comma zero? Because y is it's not moving. Okay, yeah, one comma zero then. Very well. Yeah. Yep, so the direction will be one zero because you can imagine if we were to hold this constant, then we are still in the same index uh, index. Actually, you might be right. We're still in the same index X and we'll be incrementing this. So it's zero, one, zero, two. Yeah, you're actually right. Uh, we, we, yeah, it's totally okay. We can call this uh, zero, one here. Yeah, I mean, it depends. I, if I hit, you look yeah. at graph, then it is one to zero because X to constant, Indeed, but yeah. then in a matrix, it goes zero, one. I agree, yeah. All right. Yep. You're right. So yeah, we have a we have a basis for directionality too. So that's fair. This is does, it, uh, does the question make sense? Uh, I think so. I'm trying to still. So let's try the next one. So uh, so let's try the B O Y. So if it's that mm -hmm. one, then we mm -hmm. will say. But then, so how would the output here would be? Will it so coordinate start is now like B O. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So is it zero comma five? For which one? That's the word yob. And then the yeah yob. Uh huh. Indeed. And now our direction became we are going downward. Uh, this so that's y it. changes, right? So the y gets changed, and you know x changes. Two, right? X changes and Y doesn't change, right? I think it's uh, X is the same, Y is uh, Y is changing. So I mean, yeah, technically speaking, graph uh, graphically speaking. Yeah, graphically, when, uh, yeah. Our X Y, so our Y is going downward. So if that's the logic, exactly. then it becomes zero comma minus one. Yeah, mm, but in this case, we are we are, well, let's think of it graphically. So we'll be incrementing the we'll be incrementing the Y, I guess, right? The one so if y is it in zero then one two so minus two zero, uh, zero. minus one yeah minus i don't two. i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't don't worry about the magnitude we can worry about that later just worry about the direction so it should be then there's only one oh sorry yeah although the other question is, you know, I wouldn't write it as negative because, you know, technically the coordinates will be increasing. And, you know, I, I acknowledge that, yeah, you are right. Um, yeah, you are right. If we were if you we were to think of it graphically, it would obviously be decreasing. But, you know, think of the, okay, let's, let's actually reward this. Let's call this the transformation to the, to the starting coordinate. So think of it as the transformation to the starting coordinate. So whatever you'll be doing on the current code on, on the current cell or the current coordinate that you're on so if you are on this one here what would you do to keep going build increment right i'll increment then it will be just plus one exactly yeah. so think of it as a transformation yeah <laughs> and then not so just plus one because it goes till two so do i go plus till two or just plus one plus one plus one yeah, just don't worry about the magnitude. Okay. So so long as yeah, so long as you just give the starting cell. So in in this case, you actually yeah, if we were to say if we were to output back, because we also have back, it would actually have the same output as this. You know, maybe the extension could entail uh, you know, determining the what do you call it? The extension can can entail determining the magnitude, but for now, only worry about the start and the direction you're going. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm just like, so here we said, v, so x is, this, zero is x, and this is y. Mm -hmm. So when we yeah. go down, so my x incremented, right? Then why, why would y get incremented? If this is zero comma one, it should be one comma zero then, right? Because my, I'm going zero row, first row, and then second row, but my y remains the same. Basically, the matrix is like zero, one, two, and zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? All right, so let's think through it again. What's the coordinate of B in this in this grid here? The coordinate for B? Yeah. That is zero comma one. 
All right, and then what's the coordinate for A? That is uh, 0, 0,2. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's 0, 0,3, 0, 0,4. All right, so which one are we holding constant? So we are holding the 0 X, as right? a constant. Yeah, so in Being Y, A. O, B, mm -hmm. then the Y con is 0, comma, what, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 0, comma 5, and then O is 1, comma 5, and B is 2, comma 5. Mm -hmm. So we'll be incrementing this one here. So then it becomes one here. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yep, that's correct, yeah. So this one actually indicates moving down, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and you're right, yeah. That's that's exactly it. So mm -hmm. think of it as the transformation to the to the starting coordinates to find the word. Okay, so I... And is there a start or I can start anywhere? You can start anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, so I just have to print, there's no like, uh, move all eight directions about the cell, but once you start moving in a particular direction, you may, you have to stick to it. So, that, uh, the so gist of that is, is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the gist of it is, you know, I don't want to do a word search, you know, like normally the uh, you can go yo, uh, like y, o, you go left, you decide to go up. But, you know, that obviously introduces complexities. So I just want you to think of it simply. If you start moving to the right, you keep moving to the right. So if we were at B and we want to find back, we'll keep going, we'll keep going. Once we find the word, we can log it, but we keep going. If we find back, but then once then, we find so, the y, then I, I change my direction. Right. Then at I that point, if you want to change, yeah, if you want to change at that point, so long as let's say you know, in that case, you're still doing the word search. If you wanna find the job one, uh, you can change directions, yes, but keep in mind that's a different word, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So think of how you would uh, return job. Actually, do you have the M here? I uh, think how you would return job while changing direction, you know, despite having gone through the backy one. So. That's kind of up to you to figure out what would uh, work well in order to remember that you've seen your mm -hmm. And bed is there in the diagonal. Does it make sense? I think so. There is no pi. There is no... So, okay. Not all the words are there. With the set of dictionaries. In the given grid. Um... So I start from A and uh, I have just given the list of words. A. Looks like A doesn't belong. Mm, okay, I need to see if there's a string first. Mm. Uh, maybe one one hint I can give you. Try and think how you can leverage the starting characters or you know the position of all starting characters and determine if you wanna start doing the search, right? So think of a brute force approach. If you were to if you were to scan the whole list and de and decide when or scan the whole grid and decide when you wanna start searching for a word, because you have a finite set of directions, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine if you if you are to scan the whole grid and then you know you you wanna you wanna determine okay do I start searching for all these words how would you know that? Yeah, first I may have to check what words because A doesn't like A is not the start of any word. So mm -hmm. probably from the list of words find out what words can I search like like what's the first letter basically. As you point, like okay. so we know that it could be a B, or it could be a P, or it could be a E, or it could be a Y. Mm -hmm. So now, 
So once I find a letter, then I can. So oh, I have to choose one direction. Mm. So they are just list of words, right? Uh, so not this character. Yep. That, um, and one more hint you can think of, can you think of any data structure that has one directionality and involves storing words? Yeah, so I'm thinking like try helps us to store words. So uh -huh. that can tell me like, you know, for a dictionary, what could be the letters which can come together? Like for example, B-E-D. So uh -huh. it can go to E-D and B-E. And we can put a star, mm -hmm. like it will tell if there's an end of word or not. So All probably right. we, I can store these words in a try. Uh -huh. uh, so this will help me to go character by character. Mm -hmm. this, so yeah, that's to for the list. So once I know the character, then. Uh, one is uh, go in, like you said, don't go in all four directions. Like if I reach B, I can, so I my direction is basically I can go to A or I can go to O. But you said I can go diagonally also, right? So I can go to diagonally. You can also go diagonally. Yeah, either up. Uh, so here's the thing. If you are, let's say, on, uh, uh, let's say, so the, uh, which So the one? goal is to find maximum words or... Yes, so what all words? for any word. So let's say let's say we had boy here. I can find boy. So I can find your by going Y O B, but I can also find boy by going B O I. So in that case, I will basically do the opposite of job and say here it will be, or one of the list or one of the list outputs will be uh, here. It's one two three okay, four, then, five five five. Then uh, I and this will be go. negative one in a direction right so if I, I so as soon as i reach b i know that b is the start of my letter then mm -hmm. i can go in all directions where it goes and then check one by one and mark them and visit it like then i go if i start going to first i can so a directions right like usually uh, so if i go on my uh right side so i can start with a and i check mm -hmm. in try that if a is there and then mm -hmm. Uh, again, recursively, basically, if I start calling, mm -hmm. and then um, from A, then it goes to C, K, let go recursively. Uh, yeah. So if I so if I hit a word in the try, I can return true. If it mm -hmm. doesn't match, I can return probably. N uh, something negative or false and mm -hmm. then so when I return true but how will I know that what word did I go to uh, well when I prob mm, before returning maybe I can store these values then there uh, in mm -hmm. my result I need then I also need to know the direction which I went so it keeps going right. Oh, oh wait. We also have this thing, right? So if I go right, I have to still go keep on going right. So I Exactly. Yeah. And that's to simplify yeah. your life because, you know, you can imagine if you were to go in all directions, then that will... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I don't think we need to go recursively. Right? We, we know these are the eight options. So once exactly. I go straight, I can just keep going straight and find yep. that if that value is there in my try. If it's mm -hmm. there, then I add the value. So I know that I went in the right direction and I found something. Precisely. It goes to yep. the other, all of these. And then once I'm done with B word, or I mean that B location, uh, mm -hmm. then I go to the next one. So I can probably do this. I mean, I can traverse in all of the values. Does that make yep. sense? And you are yeah, one thing I can call out just to make your life a bit easier, you thought right about, uh, you know, knowing which word you saw. So how can you maybe, maybe, you know, we call it a prefix tree. Can you maybe keep track of the letters you're seeing and build a word? 
and then as soon as you find an end word you know just you know you'll already have a history of the word you are forming so far and so when you hit a true you can just you know create an output format for that value does that make sense yes uh, so i can keep the word yeah i can keep the word i say i'm just um Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So but then I know that this was the word it went to. Exactly. Because uh, you'll be building the words on the fly as you navigate the try and you won't need to any to do any tracking again to build the word again. It's extra memory, yes, but may save you a lot. In fact, if you want to like uh, you know, I'm assuming that if you don't want to do that, if you want to save for memory, an alternative is when you're building your try you can keep up a, you can keep a reference of the parent and so in that case you can always navigate back up and restore your word does that make sense yeah no wait but so obviously if I... that sorry go ahead yeah obviously that that entails having to build a more complex try structure normally people use you know a bunch of uh, uh what do you call it you should use a bunch of lists to just not worry about it but if you're going to actually make the entries nodes with reference to the exact parent then you have to worry assuming that let's say uh there are multiple uh there are multiple what do you call it uh there are multiple entries to the parent let's say like we have multiple directions for b so you have to know which exact b you are going towards Mm -hmm. So that that might be problematic. So just you know, keeping uh, you know, for now I won't give you any memory restrictions. I think you you have a general gist of it. So you just use a try, and then navigate it as you go through the grid. That's the general idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you wanna try coding that out because we're kind of you know we're kind of pressed on time, and I want you to at least take an attempt at that. I know it's a hard problem, so don't worry if we don't solve it. As I said, it was asked by TikTok, and you know they always push you for the harder ones. But I'm I'm glad that so far you've seen the general uh, direction you should be going with this. Mm -hmm. Just wondering. Um... So if I have to, so I have to create a whole try, right? I don't think we have never written a try. Let's see. Or if I even to be honest with you, yeah, the whole idea is to try and see how you build a try and then customize it to suit your needs. So it's actually a try building problem in disguise. Okay, so let's see. So, um, so what all do we need in a try? Is we would need. Me a minute, okay. Let me just try to write it on my paper and see. Alternatively, if you find this a bit harder to implement, I can give you another quick pointer for an easier approach that I kind of proposed later on, although I didn't have the time to build it, because honestly, this is a very customized try. So try and think about what if you, because you, know, you already know the lengths of the, word, of the words. So if you, if you like uh, kept track of the starting words plus the length of the words, as you navigate the grid, if you just did, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, think of it as a flower. So if you if you find a starting word, just flower out in all directions, and see if any of the words or if the words you're looking for is in a, the list of words you're generating. So flowering at any given point up to the maximum direction of the length of the words based off of the stats. Does that make sense? So basically, you're saying if I know that back is four and back is exactly. five, so when uh -huh. I am in the B. I uh, uh -huh. if, and I, if I go on my left direction, 
no right mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah whatever direction i pick so i yep. know that mm -hmm. the four characters so i pick i go till the fourth character yep in all directions there if that is that word if that's the mm -hmm. word then that's the direction and that's the way to go exactly yeah. that's that's honestly that's the approach i told my interview about later on and they were like oh they did not think about it because it's much more efficient you yeah, don't I have think... to save too much <laughs> Yeah, I think because right? when word word comes and breaking of word comes, everybody thinks this of try. Exactly. Like honest, this is the thing. I, I'll I'll you know I'll call it out. My interview was from China, and I know you know when you when you're doing you know uh, interviews with Chinese companies, they tend to be very exact about optimal solutions, and so his approach was only a try. I personally work at Microsoft, so I I feel like he respected my stance enough, and so when I told him, okay. Uh, but this was literally after we've done the interview and so i feel like it kind of impressed him because i told him how about we just flower out from all starting points it's more efficient we don't have to save anything else we don't have to do you know multiple um what do you call it multiple uh scans through the through the array because let's say if i log b and point out back and the size and bucky and the size then once once i'm at b i can do you know the same fan out and cover all bases with b Right, so it's just four. You know, it's back. If it's five, you know, it's bucky. In fact, I can even do extra pre-processing in case I have words that kind of compose each other. So if it's back and bucky, I can literally just try and find bucky, and I'll know I also have word. I I also have back. But that's what kind so of that try also does, right? Exactly. Like I can do that kind of pre-processing if I want, but at the end, my fan out will not involve searching for a try word like. It will. It will only involve. Um, what do you call it? It will only involve doing a length search in this case. Hmm. Makes sense. So, can you think of a way to fan it out? How would you fan it out if you were to do it without building a try? Yeah, so that's what we said, right? So if I, as soon as I reach A, uh, mm -hmm. we can still know what the letters of our start. Mm -hmm. And um, but will it be efficient to? I mean, if there's a hundred of hundred words, and if we start putting all the letters, so we basically have a list which says that these are the start of the letters. And then we have another list which says that that's the maximum length it can go to. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're saying that B can go max is four, five, and three, and two actually, right? So mm -hmm. my B will go like the max length it can take is I have a four. Letter word. There's a three-letter word. There's a two-letter word, and there is a five-letter word. And the same goes to I, C, and then we have E, and then we have Y. We'll have something like this, mm -hmm. so it can tell us how long at least we have to fan out. E is mm -hmm. two. Y is three, and then so when I reach A, I know that hey A doesn't doesn't belong. So if I go to B, then I know that okay B can fan out. So now let's start fanning out from here, down mm -hmm. side. I mean, mm -hmm. down the with the constraints. So yep, I in that case you have the direction too. Uh huh. Yeah, so I have the direction, so I know that I can fan. So if I start from here, so I fan mm -hmm. out all these values. So basically, it becomes back, B A C, B A, and this B A C Y, and then I can check if they are there, mm -hmm. and then I can add them, whichever is present. Maybe make it a set kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you already have the list of words, right? So you can certify that and save your life there. Yeah, I have a, this. Is, this is a list of words. So I can make a set of words. Uh huh. 
So it's in fact, let me let me make it simple so that you don't worry about that. Let's make it a set of words. So uh, let's assume yeah, no we, repeats. Yeah, we can just do. Con does it contain? And we mm. should know that this is a okay. This words are there. Uh, and then so this is one direction. Then we go to this direction. And of course, there's a limit. Yeah, we can do that. And then uh, now again, so A won't be there, C we don't need to take, K, and then we reach Y, which is there. And then we can't pan out here, no side, no diagonals. Back we can try. So when we go down, so we know we already got that three. Should we, yeah. I mean, they could be O, O, Y, B also, right, this way. So, yeah, we can do all the, then we go all the elements one by one. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I validated that. Yeah, you can, you can go, you can go through the grid. Assume for now that the grid is small enough that you don't have to worry about uh, looping through it. Like, that's not an issue. Okay. Obviously, as we scale, we can always optimize for that. But for now, uh, it's uh, and you know, at least I can see you already have the data structures and algorithm knowledge, so we can you know at least practice for the coding part, right? Mm -hmm. So now I need to return is a list of what are a coordinate and the word a string and another kind of coordinate only, so it's a direction coordinate. Hmm. So if I need to list of some class I can make So we can have probably a tuple, right, for this, a pair, teacher, comma, and teacher. That. And um, and then another pair, which is direction. for now. This will be returning this So my input is Word grid coming. 
and then there will be a set, set, set of That's it, right? We have the grid and we have this, yeah. <coughs> so I can try this one to zero, go less, I less than four grid, up, then plus plus. Start reading now and uh, so we have eight possibilities, right? So we need to check the directions. Mm. Before that, I need to read the word set and make them. I can make a map of cash now. We have my character. and I get a map. Okay, so I have a list now. I'm going to have a map and I'm have a list. Let me check if my word grid of I, comma J is there in my hash map. My dot contains. If it is there, then I you know I I do something or I just skip. Um. So if it's there now, um.
Okay, we can move left. All other directions move left. Mm. Move left means if I am in zero comma zero, uh, I need to go zero comma uh, whatever value I have there. Number of words or no, not number the words Get the list. This is my list. Now I need to check I have four, three, two, five, and I am in zero comma one. Uh, so I will say zero comma one. I need to plus my I. No, I have to plus my J. So that is. Mm, okay, let's do it here. So now, left direction is Y. So now I have sorry four three five. Uh, to go to my direction, so I can go length step and from J plus length. So this is my int end index. Uh, so if I am in one and my length is four, if I add plus four, so it will be minus one. To one.
Sorry, I, I might have to interrupt you. We have uh, we have about, about about ten minutes, and I wanted to at least make sure we go through the feedback. And you know, if you have any questions or anything, we can do that. So can okay. we like maybe conclude for the next two minutes? It's at forty-eight in my time, so we can stop at fifty. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Sounds good. This is my, these are in my characters, right? So I still have to read one by one, A, C, K. So then, probably, I should take this list. And I think I should do short. But uh, but I'm not checking if back and back he have any answer. So it doesn't matter actually. So no. Mm -hmm. Later. Apologies, I have to end it here. It's totally fine. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I know it was a hard question, so don't beat yourself up about it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those challenge yourself questions. You know, there are a lot of uh, good approaches to approach it. But overall, uh, before I give you my feedback, I think it will also be logged as part of the transcript. But how do you feel like you did? Um, I mean... I think the try solution I came up with, at least I could have, I can I could have started with it, but I think the second approach you gave I liked it more. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have given, I probably would have started with the try, and gone from there. Uh, I think I asked enough question to understand the problem because usually I get this feed. I have got this feedback in past that. You should ask lots of requirements and make sure that you understand the what all, um, mm -hmm. how output should be coming. So I think I did mm -hmm. that part. But yeah, I think I could have put more effort in thinking and come up with that solution. Uh, e, I mean, yeah, and I think I should speed up my uh, coding sk uh, writing skills. I, I will give you commendations. I feel like you have a really good intuition on what needs to be worked on. And so I can read out my basic feedback while going into the uh, depth of it. So overall, I really liked your communication. I felt like you articulate you clearly not what, not knew what you're talking about. And that's always a good thing. Communication sometimes beats technical expertise because if you know what you're talking about, then 
people can actually help you out if need be. Um, I, yeah, as you said, I felt like you identified the try solution fairly quickly, and you know, with, uh, while yes, I kind of had to hint that think of a structure, you still identified it fairly fast, which is good. Uh, the one uh, suggestion I'll give on that is sometimes where you know before interviews or even when I'm interviewing candidates who are at my company, what I do is I literally write out all structures. I don't even need to go into depth uh, depth at them. Because just mm -hmm. having the visual cue of, let's say, a try cue and everything, when I'm thinking through the problem, then I'm no longer thinking of, you know, a random idea popping out. I just look at the structures and think of, okay, can I use a cue here? No, can I use a try here? Oftentimes, just the mention of the structure, or even the word structure, as you saw here, is enough to show you the solution. It gives you a direction to start with, uh, you know, kind of ironic given the directions in this problem. The other thing is... Um, I felt a positive was, you know, you showcased curiosity about the problem. You actually tried to engage with it. You actually called, you know, discuss, uh, went into depth with the directionality of uh, the direction, which is always a good thing. Showing curiosity in the problem is an important thing because most candidates don't even engage enough to understand the problem. They just you know, either jump to random solutions that they crammed, you know, try to stick templates on the problems, even when they've not exactly understood it. Like, I know the directionality in this case was kind of wacky because normally you're allowed to move in any direction. But when you have to stick to it, then that's when you actually start to wonder, oh, crap, then what actually does one zero mean or zero one mean or negative one mean? You actually have to be mindful about the exact value. Like, if you were to do it recursively, I'm pretty sure you just, you know, write zero one and then start mm -hmm. negating and, you know, adding one and minus one to all the directions until you get eight. You wouldn't care about the exact direction you're going in, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, one negative was I felt like, yeah, it was fairly slow. Like, you felt like you were struggling to get the confidence to jump onto the programming part. I feel like, you know, you should showcase that you're more interested in starting to code. So, Elias, it's good to clarify a lot. You know, a lot of questions is good enough for that. But it, you can even, you know, try and explain your logic in pseudocode. Like, you need to show that uh, fire, that you want to just start coding. But at the same time, don't rush too fast into it. So, after like 10, 15 minutes, try and just start coding anything, even if it's pseudocode. Uh, that yep. will show you actually thinking of programming it out. And then... Um, you know, you know, once you started coding, I, yeah, you're right. I felt like your speed slowed down. Like you've already shown me uh, that you're a fast thinker, but the moment you started to code, you slowed down. I felt like you're not uh, explaining even your choice of uh, chase. Uh, what do you call it? your choice of structures? You are just slowing down and going fairly slow with it. And so it was almost like conducting two interviews. First one, you're very snappy. Second, uh, after you know the first. Uh, part you became uh, super slow so one suggestion i'll give in order to try and help this is try and decouple the two so try you know you 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 speak well you articulate things well and i think you're the kind of person who prefers to code in silence so try and say okay so i'll you know b uh, build a try or you know not, not a try i'll say i'll have a word search function that you know saves uh list uh this and that and then you code it out in silence then you can say, okay, then I'll create a class that does this and that and that, and it will do this and that and that. Then you code it out in silence. And then when you reach at the four loops, you can say, yeah, so here I'll have two loops, one that, you know, goes through the outer, uh, outer list to generate all coordinates and do this and that. So it's saying what you're doing before you do it. And, you know, one advantage of this is in case, let's say, there's an issue with your logic, that's when your interviewer can ask you about it. And at the same time, it allows you to talk about complexities without even needing to do an analysis later. So you are showcasing complexity logic as you go through the codes. You can, tell, you can say, I'll go through the list that will be n squared and uh, all, all the coordinates that will be n squared. You know, you, ru you literally rule out the complexity talk. And so even if at the end you don't have the time to analyze the whole complexity of the code, at least you talked about it throughout. And so the interviewer will see that you have that knowledge. And uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I, that's one of the negatives and how to improve. On technical skill, I'll give you commendations. Your code was overall accurate, so I could see that there were minimal bugs and you were thinking deeply before you wrote anything, which was good. And, you know, minimal bugs shows meticulousness, although at the same time, it could, uh, 
it could be it felt very slow so try and imp improve your speed in that case and you know practice will only help you get better and mm -hmm. uh yeah one one aspect of communication i'll uh, encourage you to work on try and be the one that gets those hints out of your interviewer sometimes you know people are stuck waiting for hints and it takes time and so one thing you can do is just ask as many questions if you feel stuck sometimes you'll be surprised because if you manage to get your interviewer to tell you the hint without them doing it the interviewer will feel like you are the one who sought the uh, who sought the clarification to a point where it was uh, you know they won't notice that they've literally give you the hint they'll just think of it as a clarification question and it just happened that you're so good at clarifying that you got almost the answer and you know if you're driving the communication and the logic then that saves you in, if it, instead of it coming out as a negative it's actually a positive on you that you're so good at getting the elicitation and so you can navigate being stuck by really really being particular and you know dig deep and engage your interviewer and one other thing you know to call out if you ask a lot of questions and if you're literally engaging your interview at all points then you know you'll actually be showcasing good collaboration skills because this interviewer will see ah this person is almost pair programming that they need me to understand every bit of code that i'm looking at so that's a good skill to have when pair programming and so it will only help you and so yeah, yeah uh what else and you know one other uh extra help uh same case uh, you can always uh, you can always um you can always say what you just did after you write it if you prefer to be silent and then explain your code but the problem with this is if you write the wrong code then you have to keep fixing things so it it might be rushy always you know always uh start with a plan if you fail to plan you plan to fail and the last one is you know that's actually the last thing so just say your general approach like if you're gonna use a pointer so let's say i'm gonna use put up a uh, pointer for this and then just uh, say what and what and then skip like you can look up templates so that you can call it out and say i'm going to use two pointers for this and then these two pointers should merge and they should be looking for that or if i'm going to backtrack you can say i'll you know, I'll, you know I'll go through characters and then i'll backtrack at this point if i see and this and that and that and then you call it out that was all my feedback i say i see like there is on uh i'm on time on with that but you can uh, make a few extra minutes if you have any questions on things i can clarify no, the, uh, thank you so much for this. Yeah, I mean, no. I think I, as I said before, also like, um, so I I did one more mock, so I got this feedback before that saying that you should engage in getting. So I think one uh, one more thing, like because I practice writing on paper, I think I should stop doing that and start writing on the computer so that it 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 feels comfortable to write and then talk. Mm -hmm. I'm just like whenever I solve, I just keep writing on my paper and scribble on it. So I think that's I one you, thing yeah. I definitely would take that and do it. Yeah, for sure. You know, we are moving to a more remote world, so soon enough, the whiteboard interview will always be a digital whiteboard, and so it's just best to get familiar with it. And as I said, you don't have to speak while you are writing. At the end of the day, if you speak before you write, that's good. You know, you, you, it allows you to still maintain the comfort of your own moment. You want to engage with your code one on one, but you'll also showcase communication by doing it beforehand. But you know, the, the, the compromise with this is that you also have to work on being a faster coder, right? Yes. Got it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Other than that, I hope uh, this was beneficial for you. Uh, yes. I guess a uh, nice, nice interview. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking your time. For sure, sounds good. Bye.